Lady from Barton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have an amendment ending in point zero four H. It has been distributed, and I move for its adoption. The lady from Barton has moved for the adoption of House Amendment Two to House Me Substitute House Resolution Eleven. Further discussion on House Amendment Two. Lady thank from Barton. You, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, rules are created to help create a productive and respectful atmosphere. The same is true with our House rules, which also gives each of us the game plan so we can make the most of our time, which allows us to be as effective as possible. House rules also encourages and preserves the formal decorum in the chamber of the Missouri House of Representatives, which allows us to conduct business efficiently and effectively. Decorum is more than just rules. It is respect for each other, respect for the institution, and respect for this magnificent building and for the position a Missouri State Representative signifies. Today, we're going to pass House rules that will guide each of us on how business is conducted in the House. It is essential to always maintain a formal and professional atmosphere on the House floor. And to ensure this happens, I have felt compelled to offer this amendment, which cleans up some of the language in Rule 98 by mirroring the previous language in the gentleman's dress code. And with that, Mr. Speaker, if there are no further questions, I renew my motion. Further discussion on House Amendment 2. Lady from St. Louis. To speak on the amendment, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the ladies. Um, attempt to ensure that we are respecting this body as we should. Um, in the past four years I've been here, obviously some of those rules, especially for, for us ladies, have been skirted and rules are rules. However, I do have concerns that some of us lack the fashion acumen, if you will, to make such decisions on uh, what we can and cannot wear. Um, we are a place of laws and words do matter. I, uh, for example, uh, this is a place where we ought to be dressed in business formal, which does call for women to have our arms covered. Um, I think we're being quite pedantic here by making rules so petty, um, and what it will ultimately lead to is the disenfranchisement of folks. For example, they don't make jackets or blazers for women who are pregnant. That could be very uncomfortable, particularly in a pro-life state. Um, I'm not here to spend anyone's money um, if we're talking business formal, as the lady is suggesting, it is inappropriate to wear sequins in velveteen before 5 o'clock p.m., and yet we do that. That's not in-house rules. Um, with that being said, I would like to inquire of the lady from Platt, please. Thank you. Sorry, lady. I didn't recognize you there. Does the lady from Platt yield to the inquiry? I do. Please proceed. Hi, lady. So I see out, right? and, again, appreciate, because I certainly agree with uh, the lady in that this is not just a place for us to come kick around and come as we see fit. You do that on Tuesdays in August, April, and November. Here is a place of formality. It is an absolute privilege to be here. We are a reflection of about 40,000 other people, and we should certainly put the seriousness of purpose when we come here. On that, me and the lady certainly agree. Uh, with that said, if we are going to be so specific on language, I want to dig deep a little bit, not even deep. Do you know the difference between a jacket, blazer, cardigan, and African? Not specifically, but my understanding is that a blazer, the definition of a blazer includes a lapel, of which not all cardigans do. I'm looking at a beautiful blue cardigan over there. I do not see a lapel, but it is a second layer. It does appear to be business formal. It does appear to be appropriate for this building. Let me apologize to the body. It is appropriate for me to have my button buttoned while I'm standing, which would require this blazer, which it is, with the lapel, to be buttoned. Um, I like to wear bishop sleeves, beautiful thick sleeves. Um, I, I like to look fashionable, um, <laughs> my boots. And so, but I also want to be appropriate. Um, I'm not here, again, to spend anyone's money or give them a day or two 
to have to buy another wardrobe uh, because an individual felt like putting something in house rules because. Do you see a problem with the way that it was written previously? I don't, and I actually don't know how this language changes too much because my understanding is that this rule is going to be interpreted about like the last rule was. Is that right? Sure. Um, I think we may have some enforcement issues. I don't think that uh, covering, to the lady's point, should be us just wrapping something around ourselves and having our arms exposed. I do agree with the lady wholeheartedly with, on, on that. That is, in my opinion, inappropriate. It's not something I would wear to you know, a normal job. This setting is business formal. It's not wedding formal. It's business formal. Um, we are not men. We've made that clear in Missouri. Um, and so with that being said, us trying to mirror men's clothing would kind of be contrary to conservative values, wouldn't you think? Uh, my understanding is that conservatives prefer women to be uh, women. Yeah, and that I, involves, I, I'm guessing, dresses and skirts and pregnancy. It doesn't get too f- more, much more formal than going into the Lord's house. Would you wear a cardigan to church? You know, you're asking the wrong person, Representative. Oh, well, I... <laughs> Thank you, uh, lady. Mr. Speaker, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. I'm a Pentecostal. I wear cardigans to church. Um, I'd like to inquire of the lady from St. Louis County, Pfeiffer District, if I will. Can please? Does the lady from St. Louis County yield? Yes, I do. Please proceed. Hi, lady. You have on a very pretty blue button-down cardigan. I served as a school counselor. You look like that looks like something I would wear to work that would be considered business formal, which this setting is. Would you agree? Absolutely. And in fact, if I could make a comment, um, in my prior profession as a pastor of a church for 41 years, I would wear this on a Sunday morning. Now, in my tradition, it's interesting, we would wear robes so that, uh, well, I suppose tradition, Uh, but it kept people warm and it kept comments from happening, because I do want to point out that in my 41 years as a pastor, what business formal was changed. Absolutely. When I started in the 1970s, I would never have worn slacks. Oh, no, Sunday morning, it would have been a huge sin to wear slacks in church. Some of you remember those days. Um, And I continued to wear dresses on Sundays, I finally started wearing slacks during the week, and one Sunday I was at church, and I realized every single older woman in the sanctuary was wearing slacks, and then I gave myself permission to change my dress code. Uh, The point is, dress codes change. They are not immutable characteristics. Um, I, I don't even understand what a blazer means or why we're having this conversation. I have things that I think are blazers, but I, as I was listening to the definition, I realized they don't have a lapel. Mm-hmm. And I, I am a little concerned for the people who are tasked with keeping decorum. Are we going to have the lapel police? I, I just want us to be able to vote. I, I, I... I don't disagree with the lady, and by no means am I trying to throw volleys and take shots. I don't want the doorman to be walking around while we're engaging in important debate, trying to figure out whether or not something is is a blazer, or while someone is in the middle of talking, uh, being able to speak on behalf of their district, someone thinks it's funny to to go get a doorman or, or to point of order them in the middle of speaking because they may not understand the difference between a blazer, an Afghan, uh, a jacket, or something else. This is not what the taxpayer is paying paying for us to do. I, I, um, I did speak with the lady, which your, ja- your, your cardigan, because it has buttons, would be banned under this rule. I think that's ridiculous because just like you, on August 2nd and November 8th won your election, and instead of focusing on what kind of top you have on, I ought to be concerned with this legislation so I can represent the 40,000 like they represent their 40,000 now. If you come in here with a tank top, I'm going to have to, I'm going to tell on you. Right. I but also have one so. more question, uh, uh, please. That, and this is a very serious question to me. I get very cold in here. I am one of the people who does wear a shawl. I'm happy to wear it over something else. But, but are we at a situation where I'm not allowed to wear a shawl unless there's something else underneath it, even if 
but I can wear a shawl, even if it's not seen, if I have a lapel underneath it, which is sort of straining at gnats, it seems to me. For sure. So as I understand it, so long as you had the, because she said knit blazer, and I want to, it says knit blazer or jacket, and to be clear, a cardigan is neither of those things. Um, there are definitions for these things that's neither of those things, so that means that the, the interpretation of this or the uh, enforcement of this can be so subjective that we are keeping women from being able to vote. I frankly, if I wear a cardigan, it, with all respect to the house, I, I cannot without a fight. Y'all gotta call the police on me because I, those 40,000 people back in my district and the Constitution, though the Constitution gives us the right to make our own rules, it does not say that our rules can inhibit our right, our constitutional duty to vote on this floor. I want to talk briefly, Mr. Speaker, thank you, lady, to the freshman, if I may to continue to speak on this. I want you all to pay particular attention because there's gonna be times on this floor where there are things that should not require debate and comment. I contend that these are one of these things. There are times to have your name said, to be recognized, to be called upon. This is not one of those things. There are some very serious things that are in this rule package that I think we should be debating, but instead we are fighting, again, for women's right to choose something, and this time is whether she, how she covers herself and the interpretation of someone who has no background in fashion, because again, it is an, and this isn't a shot, it's inappropriate to wear sequins before five o'clock telling me that I can't wear a crispy good St. John sweater if it has too many buttons. I spend $1,200 on a suit and I can't wear it in the people's house because someone who doesn't have the range tells me that it's inappropriate. That's not why any of us were elected, Mr. Speaker. None of us. I urge us to vote no on this because it's ridiculous. And also, congratulations, I'll keep that to myself, to any of us who may be with child, um, you surely don't have enough or have the money off the salary that we make to go buy a bunch of, of new clothes or tailored clothes. And I hope that you're able to continue to wear your cardigan um, and vote on behalf of the people who sent you here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion on House Amendment 2. Lady from Wright. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak in support of the amendment. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to thank the lady for bringing the amendment forward. I couldn't help but consider as I was sitting in my new seat that happens to be my grandfather's seat that he served in in his last term in the 80s, Mr. Speaker. And I, I, I sit there listening to the debate today, Mr. Speaker, over this issue. Yes, there's been many lively opinions. Yes, there's been many voices heard. That's the point of this body, Mr. Speaker. But I was reminded of the fact that I looked through my grandpa's pictures the other day, Mr. Speaker. The same decorum then prevails now, and it's very important, Mr. Speaker, because it's about more than any one of us or any one of our opinions. It's about the legacy that we leave by following the rules and the structure of how House that existed before we were all born and Lord willing will exist after we were born. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I would like to go on and say that as I've mentioned to some of the colleagues here this week in regards to the ladies amendment, when I got my first job at Ace Hardware, I was hired by many, by an individual alongside many female colleagues and many male colleagues, Mr. Speaker, they had rules. They expected them to be followed because decorum is important. We were expected to police ourselves and make sure that we respected the structure of the body that I was a part of at that moment. And now, Mr. Speaker, that same girl who worked at Ace Hardware gets to stand on the House of Representatives floor. The same thing that my boss told me then, I believe, applies now. It just happens that we have a different boss, Mr. Speaker, and that's the people. The people need us to get to work. The people need us to vote yes on decorum, yes on respecting who we represent because we don't represent any... Uh, it's so much bigger than us, Mr. Speaker. It's time to move on. Vote yes on the amendment. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion. Lady from Jackson. Not Platt, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To inquire of the amendment maker. Does the lady from St. Louis County yield? Sorry, lady from Barton. Do you yield? Yes, I do. Please proceed. Good morning, lady. Good morning. So I'm curious about... Um, why you felt so strongly about this, um, considering uh, the upper chamber does not have this restriction and they seem to be able to do the people's business 
just fine with decorum, why are we different? Well, one, we're not the Senate. Two, right. this has always been a House rule. And if we're going to have a House rule, we need to abide by that House rule. Lady, do you think that every single law we make in this building, we should be making the laws based on the laws that are already in place? We've been doing it this way all along, so we should continue doing it and maybe restrict it further? So there's a difference between what you're talking about and what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is adding to the decorum, which is vital in this building. I've seen a lot of lack of decorum in this room in my two years here, and not once has that lack of decorum spurred from someone's blazer or lack thereof. I've seen a lot of fireworks. I've seen some people calling our speaker some names. Um, she was dressed appropriately, but I did not see decorum there. Um, there are a lot of ways we could break decorum in this room, but a woman, what she's wearing, that is ridiculous. I have personally been called into question offline about what I was wearing, even though I was following rules. But oh. it was some gentleman in this, in this room who decided that they wanted to question what I was wearing. You know what it feels like to have a bunch of men in this room looking at your top, trying to decide whether it's appropriate or not? Are we going to have um, Dana be checking our, our um, tags for whether it's a, a knit blend or a polyester blend or does silk count? I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Lady, you're right. It is ridiculous. It is absolutely so absurd why are you doing it? that we even have to talk about it on the House floor. I agree. In so why did you bring it up? Chamber. Why should we talk about something like this? It is absolutely ridiculous. You, would you think, brought this you to would the think, floor, lady. You, you tell think, me. You would think that all you would have to do is say, dress professionally, and women could handle it. You would think elected would officials think. could handle that. You would think. But you know, we're, we're walking around men, here in sequins and velveteen, men, to the lady's point. So what is appropriate, and why do you get to decide? We need to get over the sequins. That's ridiculous. All right, so men are required to wear a jacket, a shirt, and a tie. Correct? And if they walked in here without a tie, they would get gaveled down in a heartbeat. Should we be if required to wear ties, lady? If they walked in without a jacket, because they, they would are? get gaveled down in a heartbeat. So we are so interested in being equal. So then we should, why didn't you write a rule that we should wear ties too? If you want to be right, equal. Let's go for it. Equal, equal, equal playing ground. Let's all wear men's suits in this room, lady. All I am doing in the language is mirroring the gentleman's language. That is it. It's and not, what is it mirroring? Who's, which gentleman? So in the dress code, rule 98, and this is not something that's brand new. At all times, when the house is seated, proper attire for gentlemen shall be business attire, including Coat, tie, dress trousers, dress shoes, or boots. Proper attire for women. Now, the current one that's in the 101st book has a whole bunch of ors. So the reason why we wanted to clarify the rule, because it's always, when you're going to freshman orientation, you are told a jacket is required on the house floor. But there were some people interpreting this if you were wearing a skirt or a sweater, you did not have to wear a jacket. So in my cleanup language, proper attire for women shall be business attire, which is exact the same thing that the men has, including jackets worn, the exact same thing, and then our list of clothes that everybody wears. But not a tie. But not a tie. Understood. Okay, so the lady who was speaking earlier from St. Louis County, she was wearing what I would describe as a cardigan. Is that in line with your amendment? There is nothing in here that says you cannot wear a cardigan. The whole idea of this is to 
wear something over your clothes that opens up in the front. That's the whole, I mean... That's, that's fair, it. but I've, had, I've seen people wear a sleeveless second layer and be called out for not being able to... So, so is that second layer required to have long sleeves? Is that what... A professional dress, professional, professional attire, that's what you look at whenever you... I mean, that's what I think of whenever I think of a professional dress. So your attire. interpretation of professional dress should be all of our interpretation of professional dress. Understood. It's Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's going to be interpreted... Further discussion on House Amendment 2. Lady from Jefferson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak on the amendment. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to support this amendment. I believe we are all professionals here, and we should look like professionals. Um, the jacket looks very nice on women. The men have to wear jackets with ties. Um, I wouldn't suggest that women would have to wear a tie, but if it comes down to that and someone wants to put up an amendment for that, let's vote on it. Um, I just I want to support the lady from Barton because she is in the right place. This is a professional place to work. We are here being professionals for all of our constituents, and we need to look that. Thank you. Further discussion, gentleman from St. Louis County Meredith District. St. Louis City. Mr. City. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, to speak on the amendment. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, first of all. Uh, I'm not going to dare to say what is appropriate and not appropriate for women to wear. Um, which is also why I won't be voting on this amendment. If it were roll called, I would be putting a present. Um, because I don't think I'm qualified to say what's appropriate or not appropriate for women. And I think that's a really dangerous road for us all to go down. We've heard a lot about decorum, and it's important to respect this place. But I see people during that debate holding up a sign saying PQ. Is that decorum? We hear people treat each other with disrespect all the time. I'm sure I've been guilty of it more than once. The last thing I'm concerned about are the detailed elements of women's clothes in here. Personally, I'd say we shouldn't really have a dress code at all. I think it's up to my constituents whether I'm acting professional in here. They are who I work for. They are who should have a problem if they have a problem with me not being professional enough. And if I'm a cowboy and want to come in here with cowboy, uh, cowboy boots and jeans on, I know a lot of men wear cowboy boots in here. Is that professional? I don't honestly know or care. Khaki pants or a suit? Which is more professional? I don't know. Our last two governors have on a regular basis been wearing a blazer and jeans with no tie. Seems like in this day and age, that's professional. This is ridiculous. Our people sent us here to pass laws, show respect to each other, debate openly and honestly about the things that impact them, not fight about mandates and rules on women's clothing. Y'all had a conniption fit last, the last two years when we talked about maybe, maybe wearing masks in a pandemic to keep each other safer. How dare the government tell you what you have to wear over your face? Well, I know some governments require women to wear things over their face, but here, oh, it's okay because we're just talking about how many layers they have to have over their shoulders. I'm so sick of it. And I wish we could just let this go and let people wear what makes them comfortable and professional and respectful. And let our constituents decide if that's not good enough. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion on House Amendment 2. Lady from Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I inquire of the lady from Barton? Please proceed as if the lady from Barton yields. Yes, I do, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Um, lady, I know that, that we have talked about this, that we felt as if the language wasn't clear in the rules and that we were not trying to change the intention of the rules at all. But as time had gone on, we'd put or this, or this, or this, and then it became that it people could interpret the rules differently and all we're trying to do today is to take the same rules that we have and make them more clear. 
Correct. That, that's, that was my understanding, and that's what we've worked on. Um, we've talked a lot about what a knitted jacket is. We thought that everyone could understand what a knitted jacket was, that it's a cardigan. But um, I have an amendment that I'd like to offer um, with you, lady, on your, on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to add an amendment to the amendment ending in point 48H. The lady from Buchanan has moved for the adoption of House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. Lady from Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I really think the intention of the rule change today is just to clarify what we already have in rules. Um, we don't want anyone to have to be the clothing police and to not have the clothing police. It's just really important that that it is clear what's in the rules. And with that, I have an amendment that I'd like to add that, ins that adds the word cardigan. There was no intention to take away cardigans. We thought that knitted jacket included a cardigan, but we will have the amendment. If you look up the definition of a cardigan, it is a sweater in which um, is open in the front and your arms go through sleeves. That's all that we're asking. So with that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I close. Further discussion on House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. Lady from St. Louis County. To speak in favor of the amendment. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I agree with the lady from Jack Jackson. Jackson. Buchanan. Buchanan. I'm, my apologies, lady. Uh, with the lady from Buchanan, I, I, again, I can't stress this enough. I wholeheartedly agree with the lady in making sure that we are adhering to decorum. Um, without question, uh, we, can, we can indicate sometimes where we may have gotten a little lax and loose, and so I certainly appreciate the lady's reverence for this body. Um, I appreciate the lady for bringing this forward, just to make sure that, to her point, we're not over-policing or, or running our doorman and our clerk crazy, and we are really just trying to do what we're trying to do, and that's to make sure that we are respecting our constituents, our colleagues, and this body. Um, so I do support this amendment, and I hope everyone else does the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion on House Amendment 2 to House Amendment 1? Seeing none, lady from Buchanan, you recognize the close. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm glad this helped clear this up, um, and I close. Lady from Buchanan has moved for the adoption of House Amendment 2, House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. And those opposed, no. And you've adopted House Amendment 2 to House, House Amendment 1 to House Amendment 2. Further discussion on House Amendment 2, gentlemen from St. Louis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, to speak on the amendment. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I planned on debating about having a voice in this chamber, about how many bills we could file, about having amendments to amendments being restricted, about our time being restricted on the amount of time that we could speak. But sometimes I just feel compelled to speak. And this time, it's because dress code brings up some emotions because I've seen a lot of lack of decorum, like, like has been said in this chamber. I've seen folks stand up on desks to be recognized. I've seen not with my own eyes, but I've seen senior members of this chamber, each party, charge at each other and nearly come to blows. But they were all wearing suits and ties. I didn't get my first suit and tie until I was in college. An opportunity that not a lot of black people get. Because in part of laws that we pass in this chamber. So even saying that someone needs to wear a suit and tie in order to step on this floor before they get their first paycheck from the state of Missouri is shameful. Because I've watched a lot of documentaries, Mr. Speaker, about my history, about black history, about American history. And a lot of those folks that are hanging from trees we're wearing suits and ties. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Further discussion on House Amendment 2. Seeing none, later from Barton, you're recognized to close.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Professionalism is important. And these rules allow us to conduct our business. And that is exactly what we're going to do after we pass this rule package. We're going to conduct our business. And with that, I renew my motion.